like to call the President of the India Association, Mr. Vijay Harilila, to welcome you all here this evening. Chief Executive of the Hong Kong SER, Honorable Mr. C. Y. Leung, Patron and Consul General of India, Honorable Mr. Puneet Agua, esteemed sponsor, Mrs. Purvis Shroff, Mr. Raj Tito, Chairman of CHIA, Consuls General, distinguished senior members of the Hong Kong SER government, in the association members, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you all to the India Association's 69th anniversary celebration of India's independence. The association had the privilege of hosting this auspicious occasion for over 50 years. I must thank our key sponsors, Mr. Guzzi and Mrs. Purvishoff, whose generosity seemingly has no limits. Their philanthropy towards causes for the benefit of several charities and communities are highly appreciated and recognized. We are truly grateful for their continual support. The objects of the association since its inception in 1949 were initially to organize social and cultural activities for our community. Although we continue to provide for such activities, we have also embarked on several different areas, which now include benefits not only to our Indian community, but also to the Hong Kong community at large. We have branched out to several different areas and play a larger role in community affairs. The main purpose of which is to promote the concept that Hong Kong is an all-inclusive society which embraces everyone despite their ethnic heritage. We hope to achieve this objective by participating in issues affecting ethnic minorities in Hong Kong. For example, we attend various activities, programs, community meetings organized by the Education Bureau, the Home Affairs Department, the Hong Kong Police Force, the Equal Opportunities Commission, district councils, and several non-governmental organizations. <coughs> 28 years ago, we promoted a program conferring scholarships upon primary and secondary students. We continue this form as, we continue this tradition as a form of encouragement to our minors. 10 years ago, the association established the Excellence Awards for those persons who have excelled in their service to the community. I congratulate all those who will receive these awards tonight and thank them for their contribution. We have a wonderful relationship with the Indian Consulate and with our newly arrived Consul General and Patron, Mr. Kuni Agrawal. We look forward to continuing our relationship with the Consul General and his Consulate. I would like to thank each and every committee member who helped make this event possible. Thank you to our two MCs, Honorary Treasurer, Mr. Richard Albuquerque, and committee member, Mr. Bishop Nawani. Thank you also to Mr. Nani Lachman and Mr. Mohan Chigani for all your hard work behind the scenes. The association thanks you all for joining and celebrating with us. Happy Independence Day. Congratulations, India, Jayden. Thank you. Thank you, President Vijay. It is my pleasure to call upon the Chief Executive of the HKSER, the Honorable C. Leung, to deliver his message. Mr. Harry Leila, College General, Distinguished guests, government colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is a great pleasure to be here this evening celebrating the 69th anniversary of the independence of India. I must say this is an important year for Hong Kong-India relations. In February, I made my first <coughs> official visit to India, standing some three days between Mumbai and New Delhi. With me were 40 business leaders from a variety of backgrounds, amongst them senior executives of Hong Kong, 
mainland Chinese and international companies. We were in India to build on the close and long-standing relations that exist between us, not only business to business, not only government to government, but also people to people. And the people, people to people part has a great deal to do with the Indian community in Hong Kong, particularly the leadership and members of the India Association. There is much to celebrate. We have seen a steady growth in bilateral trade in the past years. Last year, India and Hong Kong were each other's seventh largest trading partners in merchandise. It is understandable why a big country such as India should be Hong Kong's seventh largest trading partner. But Hong Kong, as India's seventh largest trading partner, I had found out. So we visited the Bharat Diamond Port. In 2014, Hong Kong bought a total of 8.5 billion US dollars worth of diamonds from India. Wow. <laughs> even, even I could work it out. You don't need a mathematician like uh, Jasper Zhang. <laughs> Even I could work it out. Uh, 8.5 billion US dollars divided by a population of 7.2 million in Hong Kong <laughs> works out to be something like 1,200 US dollars per man, woman, and child. <laughs> My wife, Regina, assured me that she had understood. <laughs> And for Hong Kong India friendship, she promised to catch up. <laughs> I have to check my credit card statements. <laughs> these, these figures say a lot about Hong Kong and how we should connect with other parts of the world. We were in India as well to seek new ways of boosting our strong ties. In New Delhi, I was honored to meet Prime Minister Modi the external affairs minister as well as the finance minister. I went away with a clear message that it was time, time for India and Hong Kong to take our long, good cooperation to new heights. Following my meeting with the prime minister, I announced that Hong Kong and India would launch negotiations on an investment promotion and protection agreement. Both sides have since made exchanges and discussions have continued. The IPPA will fast track our business and investment cooperation. The opportunities are certainly there, say for example in infrastructure. I know that infrastructure development, everything from road transport to ports, railway and more, is a priority with India seeking global investment as part of its Make in India drive. Hong Kong, of course, is blessed with world-class infrastructure and the professionals that make it happen in Hong Kong and around the world. Hong Kong counts as the world's fifth busiest container port. Our international airport has been the world's busiest cargo airport in the past six years, and is among the world's busiest passenger airports. Just this month, we have begun construction of a three runway system with completion in eight years' time. In rail transport, Hong Kong will complete its section of the Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link in 2018. When finished, Hong Kong will should connect with key Pearl River Delta cities, tying us directly to the national high-speed rail network. Hong Kong's railway management expertise, I should add, is in demand. Our MPLC runs the metro system in Stockholm, Sweden, as well as London's future cross-rail train surface, one of Europe's largest infrastructure projects. Hong Kong is certainly pleased to offer railway management services to India and other parts of the world. Hong Kong is indeed a super connector between the mainland of China and the rest of the world, not only in transport and logistics, but also in areas such as business, technology, culture, and education. For we enjoy the combined advantages of one country and two systems. We have the advantage of being part of China and the convenience of practicing, so to speak, the other system. 
were well placed to help Indian companies tap into the promise of the mainland of China and the larger Asian region. That is why Hong Kong is home to some 1,500 Indian companies. I welcome and encourage more business partnerships between Hong Kong and India. I look forward as well to strengthening our educational connections. In the 2015 academic year, some 365 Indian students studied in Hong Kong universities full time. Hong Kong and Indian post-secondary institutions are at present engaged in 13 research collaboration projects. And that number, I'm sure, will greatly expand in coming years with both Hong Kong and India actively pursuing research and development in innovation and technology. During my visit to India, I had the pleasure of visiting the Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi. I was impressed by its excellent education, research, and inventions, and I look forward to many more collaboration opportunities between Hong Kong and Indian institutes. There is promise too in cultural cooperation. Last year, some half a million Indians visited Hong Kong, and the number will only go up. Next week, a Hong Kong tourism board mission will visit India to talk travel, the business of pleasure, with their Indian counterparts. And let me add that an MOU in cultural cooperation between Hong Kong and India is in the works, and I hope to see it concluded as soon as possible. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in Hong Kong and India have much to look forward to. My thanks to the India Association Hong Kong for this warm evening. Let us celebrate our friendship at this special occasion of India's 69th anniversary of independence. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Executive. It is now my pleasure to call upon the Council General of India and the patron of the India Association, Mr. Puneet Agrawal, to deliver his Independence Day message. Honorable C. Y. Lon, Chief Executive of uh, HKSR, Mr. Vijay Harilela, President of India Association, senior members of the HKSR government, my distinguished colleagues from the Consular Corps, distinguished members of the Indian community, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to convey my warmest greetings and best wishes to all members of the Indian community on the 70th Independence Day of India. I would like to thank the India Association Hong Kong for organizing this August gathering for celebrating our Independence Day. I would also like to acknowledge in our midst Honorable Chief Executive of HKSR, whose presence has made this occasion, occasion special for all of us. I would like to thank you all for participating in this event. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Indian community in Hong Kong for the immense contributions that they have made to bilateral relations between India and Hong Kong and for the economic prosperity of both India and Hong Kong. India's relationship with Hong Kong is unique because of their efforts. We have gathered here at a very important stage in our journey since independence. India is now the fastest growing major economy in the world with a thriving middle class and the largest democracy. As you would have read, there are several important messages which our Honorable Prime Minister has given to us in his address from the ramparts of Red Fort yesterday. He talks about the sacrifice of our freedom fighters and how this should motivate us towards good governance, focusing on responsibility and accountability. He also spoke about transparency and efficiency in delivery of services by the government. He emphasized unity in diversity and India's tradition of non-violence. He spoke about upliftment of the most vulnerable sections of our society, including women and youth. The Honorable Prime Minister has given us the necessary vision and directions. We must take this opportunity to commit ourselves to taking our country to greater heights. Thank you and Jai Hind.
Thank you, Consul General, for your inspiring Independence Day message. The India Association has given excellence awards for uh, well over 10 years now, and the first of this year's recipients is the Fire Services Department. There is little doubt that the Fire Services Department performs services well above and beyond the call of duty. Their heroism has constantly been in display. This was evident, for instance, during the blaze in 2011 in Tokwawan, which tragically saw four members of the public lose their life. Similarly, in 2013, tragedy was averted when a mystery spark set alight liquefied petroleum gas seeping from a tanker. Most recently, and I'm sure everyone in this room is well aware, the FSD bravely fought a massive four-day blaze in Ngatau Kok, and it is with great regret that this resulted in loss of life. In particular, those of firefighters Samuel Hoi Chi Kit and Thomas Jung. We offer our condolences to the families of these brave men and to the Fire Services Department for the loss of these two outstanding individuals. Uh, frankly speaking, we are humbled by the dedication of men and women who have constantly put the safety and well being of the public above their own. The India Association is proud to confer the our excellence award to the fire services department which we consider to be a role model for fire services around the world it's my great pleasure to call upon the director of the fire services department mr lee kenya to receive the award on behalf of the entire department Excellence Award goes to Mr. Bob N. Harilela, who has been at the pinnacle of the Hong Kong Indian community for most of his adult life. Mr. Harilela was born in Xiamen, a district, district of Guangzhou, and moved to Hong Kong in the late 1930s. Mr. Harilela was born just before the Japanese occupation and the outbreak of the Second World War. His family were impoverished during these difficult times. Nevertheless, through hardship and perseverance, he and his brothers not only managed to survive, but also established a lucrative trading business as the war came to an end. The family business rooted Mr. Harilila in Hong Kong and made it his permanent home for himself and the entire family. With Hong Kong now his home, Mr. Harilila began in earnest working towards the betterment of Hong Kong through his passion and involvement in the community level, as well as serving on several government bodies. His achievements are too numerous to list, and are also all too well known to all of us here. He was appointed as Justice of Peace by the Hong Kong government in 1977, as well as being awarded the Order of Distinguished Rule of Mulege by the government of the Maldives in 2013. His most recent recognition was conferred upon him by the Sindhi Association of Hong Kong in 2016. Mr. Harilila was the association's honorary advisor for several years, prior to be elevated as the association's patron in 2015. The conferment of our excellence award in favor of Mr. Harilila has been outstanding for too long. Nonetheless, we are honored to present him today. Mr. Harilila is unfortunately unable to join us today, but may I ask Ms. Poonam Harilila to come on stage to accept the award in his place and invite Mrs. Parvez Shroff to please join us in the presentation of this award. VP Raj Mainik, kindly escort Mrs. Shroff to the stage. maintained law and order for the people of Hong Kong under sometimes difficult circumstances. This year we are delighted once again to give awards to two exemplary officers of the force. The first award goes to Police Constable Wong Wing Sum. 
During the evening of 8th March 2016, the heinous crime of murder took place inside a convenience store in Yamate. The assailant fled the scene of the crime and entered into the streets and became an immediate threat to public safety. Constable Wong carefully scrutinized CCTV records taken from the crime scene and was ultimately able to identify salient features of the assailant. A task force was quickly assembled and set out to successfully apprehend the suspect. Without the dedicated scrutiny demonstrated by Constable Wong, we would continue to have had, had a dangerous element amongst our midst. We are thankful to Wong Wing Sum, Police Constable 7974, for the bravery and diligence he exhibited. And before we move on to the award ceremony, I'd like to hand over to my co-MC to read out the second citation. The second award goes to Police Constable C. Chun Pong. In the afternoon of 5th February 2016, Constable C, along with a task force conducting an anti-crime operation, intercepted a suspicious mail in the Yamate district. The team approached the individual and identified themselves as police officers. The individual, for reasons unknown, immediately became emotional and withdrew a sharp offensive object from within his trousers, pointing it at the police as well as the public bystanders. The immediate reaction of the task force was to ensure public safety as their first and foremost duty. Upon securing members from the public from harm, C. Chun Pong, PC 7091, immediately took it upon himself to subdue the assailant before any harm could have been committed. Unfortunately, in doing so, the brave constable sustained injuries to himself. The India Association is grateful to C. Chun Pong, PC 7091, for protecting members of the public and putting his own safety on the line whilst carrying out his duty. Can I please call upon Mr. Nano Lachman to escort the recipients to the stage? I would like to invite I would like to invite Mrs. Smita Agrawal to come up and present these awards. service in Hong Kong is undoubtedly one of the best in the world. We are extremely grateful to the medical fraternity and the hospital authority who have always been there to aid and help the people of Hong Kong. The first hospital award this year goes to To Hoi Chu of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Mr. To is a renowned urology nurse who has made significant contributions in his profession during his 29 years of service at the QEH. Mr. Cho has actively participated in international and local conferences and training sessions in aspects of surgery and urology to share his knowledge and experience. As a result of his considerable expertise, he has been able to contribute significantly to the development of urology nursing in Hong Kong. For instance, in the year 2000, he initiated and successfully operated a specialist urology surgical nursing clinic which alleviated the previously inadequate level of support in this particular field. More recently, in 2014, he established a fast-track system for the screening of high-risk patients, which has been an immense boon not only for us here in Hong Kong, but also in mainland China. Apart from his work at the hospital, Mr. Cho has served the community as president of the Hong Kong College of Urology Nursing, and also as the Honorary Secretary and Vice President 
of the Hong Kong College of Surgical Nursing between the years 2013 and 2015. Could I please request Mr. To to come up to the stage to receive his award, and at the same time it's my great pleasure to invite Mr. Raj Seethel, President of the Council of Hong Kong Indian Associations, to present this award to him. Fraternity Award goes to Francis Chu Hing at the Queen Mary Hospital. Ms. Chu began her career as a registered nurse in 1983. She is experienced in a full range of nursing care, having received extensive training in several medical disciplines. She became a nursing officer in 1993 and joined an international organization for per peritoneal dialysis where she served as a council member. She was the founding president of the Hong Kong Renal Nurses Association, which attracted over 300 members in the first year of operations, with membership extending to the mainland and Taiwan. Ms. Chu continues with her dedicated work in renal and nephrology care, providing her exper expertise, training, and assistance whenever called upon. Can I please request Ms. Chu to the stage to receive her award? I would like to invite Mr. Mohan Chugani to present this award to Francis Chu Hing. We are recognizing a very long and former serving member of our association. Mr. Larry Permanent joined the association in 1973, where he remained as a member of the association's committee until his retirement this year. He served as the president of the association for a total of six years during the course of his tenure. Uh, during the time spent developing and enhancing the services of the association, Mr. Permanent was adept in his ability to organize events and um, uh, the difficult task of motivating the committee to serve to the benefit of the community. The association's Diwali Bowl festive events were more often than not shared by Mr. Parmanand. Even the association's celebrations of India's independence bear his extensive influence. With his leadership flair, Mr. Parmanand was able to establish on a consistent basis a successful trend in activities which became regular features of the association and remain so to date. Outside of this association, Mr. Parmanand is active in various other organizations and through his expertise has also been able to see them to high levels of success. His legacy remains with the association through his many hallmarks and today we are truly honored to recognize Mr. Parmanand with our outstanding service award to the community. May I request Mr. Permanent to the stage to receive his award, and may I call upon past presidents, Mr. Gary N. Harila, Mr. Nanu Lachman, Mr. Nothan Tolani, Mr. Mohan Chagani, and Mr. M. V. Ramadasan to all come onto stage to present the outstanding service award. Every year, we hand out 25 scholarships. 15 of these scholarships are presented to students recommended by the Student Financial Aid Assistance Agency. Seven will be joining us tonight. In addition, we will be presenting 10 scholarship, scholarships to students of the ethnic minority Yamate Kaifong Primary School. Two representatives will receive the awards on behalf of the other students tonight. Could I ask our honored guest, Mrs. Smita Agrawal, to come on stage to present these scholarships. Mr. Raj Mane, kindly escort Mrs. Agrawal to the stage. May I also request Ms. Caroline Leung of the SFAA 
to escort the students to the stage. May we request the Deputy Headmaster of the Yamate Kaifong Association School, Mr. Dixon Chan, to escort the students to the stage. <laughs> Could Mr. Kamal Mutani bring the envelopes up to the students and join us on stage together, please? Could I request the other students to please come on stage, please? that you remain on stage because we would like to express our appreciation to you for gracing this occasion. And at this juncture, we would also like to say a big thank you to Rusi and Pervez Shroff for once again sponsoring our Independence Day celebration this year. On behalf of the India Association, we would like to present both Mrs. Smita Agarwal and Mrs. Parvez Shroff with a token of our appreciation. Would I therefore call upon Mrs. Belle Harileva to present a bouquet of flowers to both of these amazing ladies. On behalf of the India Association, we thank all of you for joining us today to celebrate India's independence. Vande Mataram, Jai Hind.